by Lupe Fiasco featuring Skylar Gray. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. We turn now to another story about secret government agencies and surveillance. Today, we continue the conversation we began Thursday with Seth Rosenfeld, longtime investigative reporter and author of a new book, Subversives, the FBI's War on Student Radicals and Reagan's Rise to Power. The book is based on more than 300,000 pages of records Rosenfeld obtained through five Freedom of Information lawsuits against the FBI over the course of three decades. It looks at how then-FBI director J. Edgar Hoover ordered his agents to investigate and then disrupt the free speech movement that began in 1964 on the Berkeley campus of the University of California. The protests prevailed and helped spawn a nationwide student movement. Seth Rosenfeld reveals how FBI records show agents use, quote, dirty tricks to stifle dissent on the campus and exposes new details about how future U.S. President Ronald Reagan's secret role as an FBI informant in the book. Rosenfeld interweaves stories of four main characters, the FBI's J. Edgar Hoover, Ronald Reagan, who was running for governor of California at the time. Clark Kerr, then the University of California president and a law target of scorn from both Reagan, Hoover and student activists, and legendary free speech movement leader and orator Mario Savio. Um, Seth Rosenfeld, welcome back to Democracy Now! We, we were speaking yesterday. We left it at Reagan, who is not yet governor, who you have uncovered um, in a way that has not been revealed before, the level of spying he was doing for the FBI. Yes. In response to my Freedom of Information Act lawsuits, the FBI was forced to release more than 10,000 pages concerning Ronald Reagan uh, in the years prior to his becoming uh, president. And these records show that he was much more involved with the FBI than previously known. He was more active as an FBI informer in Hollywood, reporting on other actors who he suspected of subversive activities. And that later, in response to this, uh, Hoover and other FBI officials returned the favor by giving Reagan personal and political help that went beyond the FBI's proper jurisdiction. Uh, Seth, you also point out how um, Reagan uh actively sought to uh, disrupt or divide uh, several major uh, Hollywood uh, organizations that he believed or had re reason to believe from the FBI were being controlled by uh, communists. Could you talk about some of that? Yes. Um, Reagan talks a little bit about his involvement with uh, left-wing groups in Hollywood and how the FBI opened his eyes to uh, the alleged communist infiltration of these groups. And one of these groups was called the uh, Hollywood Independent Committee for the Arts, Sciences, and Professions. It was a broad-based group um, that had many members from all different political perspectives. And Reagan, on uh, being informed by the FBI that it was allegedly run by communists, proposed a resolution uh, for this group and he and other members brought this forward at, at, meet, at a meeting of the group. And the, the, re, the resolution was the effect that um, the group repudiates communism. And um, uh, this, this was a very divisive measure, and it, it led to a split within the group. And Reagan says that he, in testimony, in court testimony, he says he proposed another divisive measure. Uh, to uh, a second group, uh, the American Veterans Committee in uh, Hollywood in the 40s. And the reason the measure was so divisive is that at this time in history, uh, there were very broad coalitions within Hollywood that included people from all ranges of political backgrounds who had come together around specific issues. So uh, that's one of the ways that, that Reagan uh, sought to disrupt these groups. He also uh, states uh, that he took the minutes uh, from one of these groups, the Hollywood Independent Committee. He, he actually uh, pilfered the minutes. And the FBI records show that these minutes later found their way into FBI files. Uh, he also tried to undermine a very bitter strike of the set, uh, set, design, uh, set builders, uh, didn't he? Could, uh, even though he was himself a, a member of the, and, and later a president of the Screen Actors Guild. 
Yes. Um, while Reagan was president of the Screen Actors Guild, there was a, a very bitter strike in Hollywood um, led by the Conference of Studio Unions, which was kind of an independent uh, union challenging the status quo. And Reagan and other members of the Screen Actors Guild Board of Directors uh, took the position that the Screen Actors Guild should not support that strike. Reagan later wrote that he was convinced that communists were behind the strike, although the evidence is that the uh, strike had some legitimate uh, issues that they were pursuing. I want to play a clip of a speech of Ronald Reagan when he was running for governor in 66 and spoke out about the free speech movement. There is a leadership gap in Sacramento, a morality and a decency gap. And there's no more tragic evidence of this than what has been perpetrated on the campus at Berkeley across the bay. There, there a small minority of beatniks, radicals, and filthy speech advocates have brought shame on a great university. So much so that applications, applications for enrollment have dropped 21 percent, and there's evidence they'll continue to drop even more. Now, we've all read the press reportings of the report that was handed in by the Senate subcommittee and its charges that the campus has become a rallying point for communists and a center for sexual misconduct. I've never seen that report. I only know what I've read in the paper about it. But I've had in my possession information that verifies, at least in part, what the press has said about that report. As a matter of fact, I have here a copy of a report of the district attorney of Alameda County. It concerns a dance that was sponsored by the Vietnam Day Committee, sanctioned by the university as a student activity, and that was held in the men's gymnasium at the University of California. The incidents are so bad, so contrary to our standards of human behavior, that I couldn't possibly recite them to you here from this platform in detail. This is not only a sign of a leadership gap, or not the only sign. It began a year ago when the so-called free speech advocates, who in truth have no appreciation for freedom, were allowed to assault and humiliate the symbol of law and order a policeman on the campus. And that was the moment when the ringleaders should have been taken by the scruff of the neck and thrown out of the university once and for all. That was Ronald Reagan speaking as he ran for California governor. In that same speech, he called for hearings to investigate allegations against professors accused of being communists and for said faculty should uh, be required to sign a code of conduct. Um, talk about these files that uh, Ronald Reagan, who then became governor, is talking about. Yes, well, that speech was given in May 1966 at the Cow Palace during the Republican primary. And you can hear Reagan focusing on the University of California, the Berkeley campus in particular. And by this time in his campaign, he has made the campus protest, the free speech movement, uh, anti-war protest and civil rights protest, a major issue. And he's not only complaining about those protests, he's using them as a way to attack the incumbent Democrat, Pat Brown. He's saying that these pose these show that there's a leadership gap and a morality gap at the center of the state's Democratic Party. Reagan, by this time, had forged a very close and cordial uh, uh, relationship with the FBI. That's a phrase that, that FBI officials use to describe their relationship with Reagan. This, has, this relationship was based on his years in Hollywood, where he was more active as an informer. Uh, he had named a, a number of people to the FBI, sometimes on very scant evidence. In, in one instance in the documents, uh, he meets a young actress at a cocktail party, and she comes up to him and says, you know, I have serious concerns about the blacklist. I think it's unfair to people. And Reagan disputes this with her and later reports her to the FBI. And the FBI, as a result of that, opens a file on her. So by the time he's running for governor, he has a, a very close relationship with the FBI. And soon after he's elected, in November 1966, he phones the FBI as one of his first acts in office, and he requests a secret briefing about the protests at UC Berkeley, not only about students and professors engaged in dissent, but also about 
members of the Board of Regents, specifically liberal members of the Board of Regents, and about the university president, Clark Kerr. Now, Seth, you Not also— Not long after this, Reagan attends his first meeting of the Board of Regents. And at this meeting, Clark Kerr is fired.